Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends, and we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy, because now it's time to rewind. I have to say, though, my favorite line, and I remember this from the trailer, it's just the way that Alicia says... I love you, Nick, and you love me, and like goes up at the end. Like yes. I, as a ten-year-old, I would just like scream that at people, just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I just love like that when so I much. wanted to be dramatic. Yeah, yeah like I, I would just read. I, I don't even remember what context I ever did, but I would just like repeat that line. <laughs> Love you, Nick, and you love me. Oh my god, that makes me so happy because she's got some great like screams. Her her voice at certain times, you know, later on, uh, I love you, Nick. Nah. You know, I can't do it, but like her voice mm -hmm. just pierces your brain when she screams, you know. And like that, I uh, another scene I absolutely love, and I'm not gonna lie, rewatching it earlier today, I just kept rewinding it. Is when she shows up at his work benefit at the like museum. In her in her like iconic riding horse riding outfit, and she just slaps him, and then he forces her up against the wall, and she screams, "Oh my god!" She is just giving it her all, and it's it's working real well. Well, and so that's it. Oh, Rewatching it, like she makes the big scene there, mm -hmm. and is screaming that she loves him, and then the next scene, he's driving home, and she's accusing him. He he finds out about the apartment, and then drives home. Right. Like, wouldn't it be very easy to for anyone to be like, there were a hundred people at this gala that she just like obviously this didn't happen. Right. Yeah, yeah. You you would think he has some witnesses, but I kind of saw it as she slaps him and then it, with her screaming and how they all like turn to like look, it does seem like he's hurting her. So I could see like some people that just aren't giving it much thought are just like oh yeah like he was she showed up and he just started like hurting her right there you know but yeah there's some You're there's right. some loopholes for sure there's a few things where i'm like and also just it's that kind of great thriller that i will always love where i'm like okay how do you know where amy lives and how are you just all of a sudden there and then all of a sudden there like this seems a little crazy cuz like you're 14 i don't think you can drive yet how are you getting around i know she took a taxi yeah. from her like horse riding show to the museum but other than that we never really see her get around to these different places you know <laughs> and how do how did where did her parents take her down the coast and how did she get again like they didn't have uber and you're not going to take a cab two hours right. yeah like, that's a great point that they just skate right over because her at the end her parents take her out of town yeah down down the coast i think you said right and that's when uh, Nick and Cheyenne are in their house and then dad shows up, but she's already there. All the candles are lit. I'm like, oh, you've been here for a little while. How'd you get here again? I assume she hitchhiked, but like, just add that line in. That wouldn't, that doesn't add much runtime. Just give us a little something, you know? I think you're thinking of that though, because of the Aerosmith videos. Maybe, she... maybe you're right. <laughs> you're filling in the blanks with Aerosmith videos. Yes. Uh, honestly. Yeah. There you go. The super cut is is the movie and then implanted with the Aerosmith videos just to like totally understand. Cause you know, you bring up a great point, Patrick. I, I bet you are right that either the script or the director's cut was longer because even with <laughs> going back to um, Nick and Amy and they're, cause you know, they're, they're strangers. He's new to this magazine job, peak magazine. And she immediately is kind of drawn to him. He's drawn to her. They're, they're assigned to work on an article together, but then and then all of a sudden he's introducing her to his his apartment, the guest house, and that's when, you know, uh, what's her name? Adrian meets her for the first time, right? But, like, it's pretty quick how they just go from, like, boyfriend and girlfriend. The whole magazine article, mm. 
it seemed like that should have been that was a bigger b plot at some point like right i don't fully understand who he was interviewing and why it was such a big deal and it, it felt like there were pieces of that missing also yeah, I agree, because I actually even looked up, wh who's the subject, Robert Lovetsky or something like that? I even, like, looked him up to be like, was this guy a real person? And from what I could tell, no. But they they talk about him enough where I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to go somewhere. And it kind of doesn't. But it does give us mm -hmm. such a fun scene where he's supposed to show his coworkers the article or the footage or whatever on the disc on the floppy disc and the disc is the, his coworker says it's empty there's nothing on it and then he runs home and i just love seeing it on this old computer i love old 90s computers zero files on disc and then he types again no files found and then he types again disc empty dun 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 so i love how it just turns into this fun little uh, technical drama and and then we get the montage of her calling a hundred times. Oh yeah. As, which and it's funny because it, I feel like when she's calling and everything, it gets tense. But then when you see it, like people typing at a computer with his half a cigar, smoked <laughs> cigar. Yeah. Like, what were you going for there? But like, someone typing on a computer is never tense, like suspenseful. Mm -hmm. It's her calling and him like sending her to voicemail is the tension of that scene. Yeah. And it's just like to cut back and forth like what yeah because also he that's when he's rewriting the article i assume we can assume that's mm -hmm. what he's doing but it's like how much time is passing because then he drops it back off at work but i'm like i feel like that would take you you know a while so it's like is she just calling him nonstop in the span of like two hours or is she's calling him nonstop like over the span of like a day you know it's a little vague i thought I, we would see him like trying to sleep and the phone's ringing off the hook you know and trying to like whatever you know show us more like different times of day but it kind of seems like it's just that afternoon you know yeah the, i think they say something like a few hours yeah but everyone's still in the conference room so i feel like it couldn't have been that long like I worked in publishing and in journalism. I can tell you now, you're never going to have a meeting at 8.15 unless your boss is Satan. Like, especially on a <laughs> Monday. Like, yeah. never going to happen. Like, when I worked in New York, interned and freelance, like, yeah. most people came in between 9 and 10. Like, there was never... Yeah. Except for me, I usually like struggle to get there at ten. Whoops, sorry. Um, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, and that in that kind of world, nine is early. Like nine, like something's mm. wrong, or like you gotta really get something done. You know. Darian's a very special girl. Pick up, darling. Oh, hi, Darian. It's my friend Amy. Hi. It's my landlord's kid, Darian. She's got a crush on you. What are you saying? I did something to provoke this? Well, did you? Now I want to ask you, Patrick. Have you ever? had a crush on someone you know double your age was there ever a teacher or a neighbor like did you ever crush this hard on someone uh have i crushed so hard that i've tried to ruin their life um i only ruin lives for other reasons um <laughs> no um no i i usually try to stay under 10 years um yeah that's a I safe can't spot. really. Yeah, I, I don't know that I've. I mean, I have a lot of crushes. Any of my friends will tell you that I've created a spreadsheet to keep them all. No, straight. you have not. Oh my god, that's a lot. Look, don't judge my life, but they all have <laughs> nicknames. The spreadsheet has photos of them. Oh my and god! How wait, we... What? Okay, the crush too, right here. It's not just one guy. It's a bunch of people in a spreadsheet. Oh my gosh, there we go. We have it. As I was saying, I realized how psychotic that sounds. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, the reboot. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're all age appropriate, mostly. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. How like, about you? I feel like I probably did have a crush on a teacher, but like, ooh, it's really hard for me to remember. Like, I didn't really ever care too much about school. So I'm just trying to think, like, did I ever kind of flirt with someone older? You know, not a teacher, but I feel like, I hope this doesn't make me sound bad, but I feel like I have flirted a touch, a little, a little itty bitty bit with like, um, you know, like employers 
like like coworkers that were older, you know, and it's just sort of like silly little flirty, which is probably I mean, I, I it's not even probably it is definitely so inappropriate. Um, but yeah, never to the extent of crazy Adrian slash Darian. No, 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 no. Like with the What's condom the... and the semen and like, oh, my God, girl, you are you are doing things. Look, I don't even like to touch my own, let alone digging through a basket for other people. <laughs> like, Yes. Can you imagine like being that insane that you're going to go through the trash? But you know what? I have to say, brilliant writing because I had forgotten that part. But mm-hmm. like, wow, you know, we finally see Nick and Amy, uh, you know, post some some time in the bed and they're sleeping together and they're naked we can definitely see you know her back his back and there's adrian and you know i just have to say like wow that is great lifetimey early 90s thriller writing i approve because of course she would then find that condom and use their little relationship against him oh my gosh like yeah this movie really does take me on a ride i have to say as cheyenne tells us nick isn't the first one and as we see at the end he won't be the last yeah. But like she's 14. So one, how does she know some of this mm. stuff? I also have to say, watching this back, I, I was never a huge Buffy fan, but Oh no. Wow. Ta- Tara always bothered me on it. On Buffy, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Very sleepy. Like very sleepy, like just a wet rag, like really did not yeah. in the in the episodes I saw. Like yep, I agree. She just, she's probably the least exciting character in the whole show yep yeah and watching this is like oh so that's not amber benson like that was literally she was she was acting well because this is what they told her to do she as cheyenne she's i I have nothing against amber benson i'm not like trying to like right say anything bad about her but like i just i haven't really seen her in anything else i was just like is that part of her acting style and then seeing her in this Mm -hmm. like She's wide awake. She's got some zingers when she's saying yeah. break both legs. Like I love know. that line, Patrick. Oh, I love it. Uh, what does she what does um Adrian say to her? Aren't you gonna wish me or aren't you gonna say break a leg? And she's like, break them both. <laughs> I love that. I, I it's funny because like seeing this, it's been years since I last watched this. But like your brain just knows, like, once you see a shot, you're like, Oh yeah, that's about to come and she's about to say something that I like. Oh yeah, that's it. You know, like that's what's so fun about this doing the show is like because I I hadn't seen this in at least, oh my gosh, over 10 years. When was the last time you had watched this? I, I would say probably even longer. It was probably... Yeah, longer. 20, I would say probably 15? even like high school. Yeah, like yeah. high school or college. I'm pretty sure my brother had it on VHS. So nice. I think I saw it like in high school or college. Like I probably put it on. Yeah. But, th- but that's the other thing too. Like this should actually be like a movie that lifetime runs all the time like it you would feels think, like that's in their right. wheelhouse unless totally. like the underage thing is against their mm. protocols or something but like you would think yeah. this would be like in their wheelhouse yeah you would totally i i totally hear you you would think that honestly you would think that lifetime would have turned this into their own you know series or like a bunch of movies like a whole little lifetime franchise you know or something i am actually surprised we never got a terrible straight to VHS, straight to DVD sequel of The Crush. It just feels like this would be that kind of movie. In, or even now with how everyone on the streaming services are so IP driven, like that we haven't gotten like a limited series, like almost like mm-hmm. a reverse version of you. Yeah, because, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about this because I love it and I would love to revisit it. But I'm like, do people really know this? Do people like it? I know it's a guilty pleasure. It's not a perfect movie. Um, So that's why I'm glad that like you and others were like, oh, my God, you know, because I I put it on my Instagram. I was like, should should I talk about this? And (laughs) luckily, a few people were like, oh, my God, absolutely. You must. So, yeah, because it's a movie that... um, I think it does hold up. It's very dated, of course, but mm-hmm. everything in the early 90s, you know, it's funny how like Scream and Clueless sort of ushered in not only like a very kind of modern style, but also technically, you know, the films look different than movies just a couple years prior. You know, it's almost like we were in a technological, uh, you know, new era and a new era of like super smart teens that really took off. So you know the, some of the music some of the score is really dated and of course the outfits but i think a lot of it is what we would watch nowadays i think if there was a new movie like this on netflix 
that comes out this weekend, I think it'd be pretty popular. The only thing is, I think if it came out now, they would probably age her a year or two to make it yeah. like that wonky 16, is it age of consent or not? And there'd probably be something closer than a kiss. And like mm. we said, there would be a girl fight. Like like that fight between in the movie Obsessed, did you see with Beyonce yes. and oh, Ali Oh, yeah, that, that, that fight is next level. Yeah. Yeah, like something like no one cares about that movie other than that and fight scene yeah you're you're very true it, nowadays amy would have a bigger role and she maybe would be there instead of cheyenne in the finale but i kind of love that cheyenne comes in because we'd see her just enough she's very supporting she's really mm -hmm. only got maybe maybe like four scenes you know but i kind of love that she comes in and she's kind of the damsel in distress when yeah another movie would just bring amy back you know that's why yeah i forgot amy even survived i thought she died like you said i totally thought she was allergic and she's dead but i'm like oh okay she's gonna make it all right i forgot that part i have to agree with you i think it's an odd choice that they didn't kill her again for an r-rated movie yeah you know i don't know if it was one of those things where it's like right now she's teetering on we can send her to a detention center as a teen at the end versus yeah. she killed a lady she going to jail like right. so i don't know right. if that played into it um but uh, apparently she killed rick too and got away with it but right. i've always been kind of surprised that they made that choice to let amy survive yeah and and i think it works with cheyenne coming in because she earlier i love when she's like i have to tell you something you know which apparently that is all real that did happen in alan shapiro's mm -hmm. life that the girl's friend you know wanted to clear the air with him so i like that we do finally have that moment you know with cheyenne in his apartment as he's packing which by the way well, I, I think i even wrote my notes i'm like okay you got the locks changed right you got the kryptonite locks which are 40 bucks extra you know to keep adrian out what are you doing leaving your door open all the time for these girls to come walking in, Nick, come on. See, some of these things, I actually think Nick is overall, like, he's he's doing some pretty normal decisions that we all would make. But then sometimes I'm like, okay, you are just asking for trouble. Close your door, lock it, cl turn off the lights. Like, you need to act like you are in hiding in this apartment, you know? So the one thing I will say, though, for me, moving and apartment hunting is literally the worst oh, thing yeah. that you could give me to do. So mm -hmm. if my, if the only place that was suitable to my standards was a guest house with a crazy teenage daughter, I would take my chances and yeah. see like if we can work something out. Like I, because like what they were showing him, there's no way I would ever have been like this rundown, like crack den or like this super yeah. nice, but crazy daughter like house. Right. Like I would give me the, I the crazy daughter. I get a yeah. taser though. If you were 10 years older. You'd what? You have to be the adult. You can't blur the line. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I really like you, Darren. I really like you too. No, I I mean, as a friend. That's a big difference. Nick. <sighs> Nick. Oh. Nick! I'm just so happy we got to rewatch because it's it's underrated. I you know, obviously Alicia has done bigger things and more universally loved things because, of course, critics weren't too kind to this movie. And I was surprised. I saw, I think, on Wikipedia, the cinema score, the audience cinema score was like a C. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding? This is a thrill ride, baby. When Oh, my God. We have to talk, Patrick, about the end. So, so the crazy chaotic ending on this carousel, it all goes back to the carousel which I love because it's so scary. It's like, what the hell is this? Hap what is happening here? And she in slow motion is running to him with that like pole, that stick, whatever it is. And how he just is able to take it out of her hands and then punch her. And she goes flying across the room. I was like, wow. Okay. We've now entered like everything everywhere all at once. Like we are now entering crazy. Uh, we are not on earth anymore. <laughs> it was wild. Mm -hmm. That punch and then just the shot of her flying across the <laughs> attic is like amazing. Like, especially because it's like she beats her dad, 
to get off yeah. of Nick. And then like, and Nick, you know, other than when she shows up to that gala and he like, you know, forcefully removes her, he's pretty gentle to her. And for him to just like, for them going through like that weird slow motion, her running through the carousel yeah. to like normal speed. And he just like pops her in the face and she like goes flying. It was very, it's very surreal. Like you said, very surreal. And like, it almost does like on the one hand, you're like, this doesn't fit and doesn't make sense with the movie, but you're also like, this makes a hundred percent like, and, and I, think, I totally agree with you. It's like, it's so wrong, but it's also so perfect. No notes. Keep, keep it as is, but it's like, we're now entering, like, that's the only real moment for me uh, that it's like, oh, okay. So we're kind of leaning into the whole zaniness of this movie. Everything else was like pretty realistic, pretty grounded for the most part, you know, but now we're just having some fun. <laughs> You know. And I think that might be the other thing why maybe at the time it it was given that C score. I think if they had leaned into the craziness of mm -hmm. the, the campiness of it at the time, because I mean, like, again, digging through the, the garbage for the condom, like, that's like over the top. You know, the carousel yeah. is over the top, but it's not really until the end that they, that Alan is really like, okay, we're just going crazy crazy town and i yeah. think if they had maybe done it a little bit earlier people would have been mm -hmm. like i feel like it would be one of those movies that like the gay community would have like adopted and like ushered in as their own and then between that and clueless alicia would have been their queen or something um yep. that's a good i point. think that's i think that's the only thing with this movie they need to to lean into it a little bit harder to mm -hmm. really win people over. And I, I think Alan was trying to straddle that line between are we making an exploitation film or are we trying to be reputable? That's a great point. Yeah. And, and also straddling like half of this is fiction. I, I wasn't going to die. And half of this is so real for him, you know, and I bet you like the like going back to Nick's cigar and how that makes him think, you know, it helps him think when he's writing. I bet you that was what Alan Shapiro did. Like there are moments where I'm like, okay, you're just, you're just adding exact real life stuff right in there, you know? So he's straddling both real life and crazy thriller fiction. I need to know if the real Darian had a carousel. Cause I'm beginning to think that oh. maybe she did. Wow. You, Oh my gosh. Brilliant. Because it's so weird. Going, like what we said earlier, it is so <sighs> weird to have it in an attic. Like, all the way up there through this hole, you know. Oh my gosh, you might be onto something. Maybe that, yeah, I could see that. Also, Maybe that's why she was so upset. She wanted to sue. Could an attic actually adequately support a carousel, or would it come crashing through? I mean, that's a good point. It because wasn't the... here's the thing: the floor is like pretty legit. Like that's a real like attic room. But again, usually, like if it's Home Alone or like some of these other movies with a with a real attic like that, where like you can make it a bedroom or whatever, they have like stairs. They don't have like the pull down, you know. Oh, and also, okay, the more that we've talked about this, the more I autobiographical that this has become about Alan Shapiro. So, like, mm -hmm. what do we really rate him as a screenwriter if? Because you said 50-50. I'm going to go, it's probably like 80% true and then like 20% fiction. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. So You're going is it there. Just like a, is it like just he ripped out journal pages and added dialogue? Like, how wow. much can we actually give him credit? For this. Maybe, maybe you're right. Wouldn't that be so interesting if he kept a journal during this crazy time in his life, but he assigns, a, you know, a journal, a diary to Adrian, which by the way, Cheyenne says she writes everything in her diary, but there's really never any finding of the diary. There's never any grabbing of it. Like we see some diary stuff, but am I right? Like there's no, it's, it's only in the beginning that we see her writing in it. And it yeah. almost feels like we need to put the shot in be so that Cheyenne can say it later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. We need well, okay, wow. You think 80% truth. Wow. So then in that case, yikes, Alan. You you this really was your therapy. He didn't want to pay for for sessions. He just wanted to write it all out and get it out. Mary, what are you doing? Making lemonade. No. What's up? He's frightened. 
miss me? Because if Darian can't have him... Darian? Go play. No one can. A moment I had forgotten, but I love. And it, again, goes back to how committed Alicia was to this. When uh, Nick wakes up and, and Amy's in bed, but he wakes up to the banging and like the, the like... Ah! And then he runs, and I'm like, "Why are you going into the house? These are this is one of those decisions that just stay where you are and just don't go there." But he goes and he sees her in the window, and she's got like a meat cleaver, and she's just going to town. We don't even know on what, but you know, I have to give a quick shout out. There's some good cinematography in this movie. Mm -hmm. There's some great like you know uh, moves and close-ups and very like good thriller horror. And the cinematographer is Bruce Surtees, I believe, and he did. Uh, Psycho 3 and some other I think was it The Exorcist 3 he did some fun movies before this I just want to shout him out but she's going to town and he's like what are you doing and the way Alicia just goes making lemonade and then she does this like maniacal quick like want some like she just like you said she got it she was such a young actress but got it she knew exactly what to do and, and maybe Alan Shapiro really helped her but I think her instincts were there and also, where were her parents that night? Like, they, yeah. like, okay, so maybe her dad was at the airport, but her lawyer mom should have, unless, unless there, we don't know that, like, her mom had, like, a pill addiction, mm. like, she should have woken up to it, too. Ooh, and been, like, I would like that, actually. I think that's a great idea. And that way, mom's always out of it, and she's kind of always just siding with Adrian, and dad's always working. Yeah, or, you know, what would be interesting is mom's got her pills, and she does come down, but it's after uh, Nick is already there. And so Adrian says, making lemonade, want some? And then we just hear, what's going on? Why are you here? And like the focus is on him, not on her, but like, what are you doing in the house at this hour? Right? That would be yeah. some good tension of how they just never believe him, you know? Well, and the yeah. other thing is, I think if they would have developed the dad a little bit, it could have explained that Adrian has these daddy issues, which is mm. why she's always going after these older guys and just falling so hard because her dad's mm. never there, you know, and yeah. she's looking for, you know, these other ways to get attention and affection. A, a really dark ending would be because, you know, she, she calls for his help when, um, which is fake. She's beating Nick, but she's mm -hmm. like, daddy, help me, you know? And then daddy goes up there and now dad is choking Nick. And he's just like, get off my daughter. And then, like you said, she hits dad multiple times, knocks him out. How dark would it have been if she kills her dad? Ooh. Where like at the end, when she's passed out after that epic punch, you know, Nick and Cheyenne realize like dad is just like breathing his last breath as like blood is pouring out. Like, Ooh, that would be twisted. And that's what would happen now in the yeah. new version of it. Like they would definitely, there's no way they would do it nowadays without a body count. Yeah, without some death. Because you're right, the only death is this camp counselor, Rick, that Cheyenne tells, tells us about. We never see him. We obviously don't see the death. There's no on-screen death. So there's got to be one. Come on. You animal! Yeah! Stop it! Stop it! Thanks so much for watching. Next time, there's going to be a new movie that we'll talk about, so stay tuned. And please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram for updates. Bye.